Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Come together, sons and daughters. Fought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God. Finish what he started. Yes, our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. still to come oh i believe if i'm not dead you're not done greater things are still to come oh i believe if i'm not dead you're not done greater things are still to come Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Christ the righteous, I'm justified. 
This is my testimony. This is my testimony. that we have a testimony and our testimony is sure that our God is good hallelujah we also wanted to to say thank you to those persons when we were praying for our dear sister I was reminded of the scripture where it says Call for the wailing women. And I don't necessarily, Pastor, don't necessarily have to call your name. You just get up and get on guard and get to moving. And I felt God moving. And what was a no before is going to be a yes this next go round. Thank you for tuning in, Dove Church. We thank God for you being with us and for your sharing in and your comments and your like. Continue to subscribe and like. And we just thank God for what he's doing in this house. Amen. And we're really enjoying the presence of the Lord. And we're praying for you always. Praying for you. And as usual, everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the word that you've sent. Help us to speak as an oracle of you. So we rebuke everything on assignment to stop the word from going forth with power and with delivering ability. And we thank you that we'll receive and operate and do advance the kingdom of the kingdom. And so now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. The title of my message today is, Don't Get Jumped. Don't Get Jumped. We find Paul, and I've been just hanging out in Acts. Has it been good for you? We find Paul on his third missionary journey in Ephesus. 
And let me tell you a little bit about Ephesus. Because everywhere, every city Paul went to, he encountered a different level of devil. A different devil. A different type. It was amazing. I kept looking. I said, God, there's a pattern here. I'm getting a little feedback, Mr. Hotel. Ephesus was a city that was full of the occult, magic, witchcraft, superstitious belief. These were the cracks in the sidewalk, the black cat, the mirror during the thunderstorm people. Lucky rabbit foot people. Lucky penny, lucky uh, uh, pennies, and lucky this, and lucky that, and lucky the other, and good luck charm, and four leaf clovers, three leaf clovers, no clover, teacups, cards, roots. Special incantation books. Ephesus was, was, was ripe with all of that kind of activity. Where Corinth was moral decay. And the city before that was intellectual decay and intellectual puffed upness. And then in another area, it was python, the spirit of a, of, of a snake that cut off breathing. So everywhere Paul went, he encountered a new phase of the devil. <laughs> it's still with us today. The key goddess was Diana. And when, when they pictured Diana, they pictured her with many breasts. She was a multi-breasted one, which was a takeoff of what God is considered to us. El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. And so she was considered the goddess of all creation and, and, and continuation of creation. And so there were temples to her all over Ephesus. To say that you've been called to ministry is also to acknowledge that you have been called to confront strongholds. Don't accept ministry if you're not going to accept that you're going to have to confront some of this stuff. It looks cute on the outside, but when you get down to the knit and the grit of the thing, you got to run up against some devil. Are you out there? Yeah. How many ministers are finding that to be true? <laughs> Even as you get ready to preach something, that's when, when that thing will try to rise up and stop you from preaching it. It happened everywhere Paul went. There was a crowd, a mob, a, a, a Jewish faction that... that were in those cities that stopped him or tried to stop him from doing what he had to do. And in this lesson, you're going to see why. Preaching and living for Jesus is a direct confrontation to the kingdom of Satan. You live for Jesus, you're in conflict. I know not, that's not the greatest news for you. Because you just like to, to have it easier. Lord, just, I just want to be at peace with all men. Let's move fastly into our lesson. 
the numbers are just going to come up. Acts 19, 11 through 12. Everything is New King James Version. When you have a say amen. Now we're going to stay in Acts this whole time, so it shouldn't take you a long time to just go down. Amen? Everybody got it? Does it start with now? Now God worked unusual miracles. What kind of miracles? By the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. There were two things that Paul would wear as a tent maker, and that was a handkerchief and an apron. Luke states that these were unusual miracles and gives an example that Paul's handkerchief and aprons, which, which the handkerchiefs were really Something that you might say, don't put that on me. They were sweatbands. Somebody bring me a handkerchief. I need a, a, a fresh one. Emily, give me, give me a No, I need a bigger one. You got to get. That's all right. That's all right. I got this one. So what he usually would tie around his head to keep the sweat from running into his eyes and he would change them, take them off and maybe just put them down. One day, somebody that was sick Picked up one of them. And got healed. <laughs> That's why Luke said, this is an unusual miracle. I want to tell somebody today, and sometimes he would have his apron on. So he could wipe his hands because he, he was dealing with leather and they would get oily and greasy. And he, 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 he would snatch them off and just, just drop them to the side. And, 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 and people were always around them and they would come along and pick them up. And they said, you know what? I, I was hurting. I'm not hurting anymore. My, I'm healed. I can breathe better. I can see better. I can... Uh, so, so, so everywhere Paul went, people were waiting for them aprons to drop off of him. <laughs> Doing an unusual miracle. It, it might have been unusual to Luke. It shouldn't have been unusual to Luke. But, 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 but God had been doing unusual miracles all along. And, 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 and these were creative miracles. I believe, and I'm running ahead all off my notes and everything because this is in my heart. I believe that when you need a special miracle, God has a creative miracle just for you. It's custom made for your situation. He don't have to duplicate nobody anything. What Luke saw, he said, this is out of the ordinary of what we normally do and how we normally operate. We pray for them and touch them and they get healed. But these people, are we're not touching them. We're not doing anything to them. They're just picking up what they need. And sometimes you're waiting for a touch when all you need to do is pick up something. Are you out there? Can't be done till somebody somebody got to do this and do the and, and and do this and something. 
I'm not saying run after my handkerchief. <laughs> but I'm saying if you need to. See, the power wasn't in the, the handkerchief. It wasn't in the apron. It was a point of contact that released faith into a person that needed it. And it came off of somebody that they believe knew God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I said, Lord, where, where did this happen before? Acts 5, 12 through 15. We're going to give you some biblical example of unusual creative miracles. And you can have one. Your own personal miracle. God can create your own get out of debt plan. Come on. Your own personal. I love God because he doesn't have to copy and he doesn't have to duplicate and he doesn't heal. He doesn't do anything the same way twice. But he always blesses. How many know I'm right about that? How many of you had, had you, you wanted God to come one way and he came another way? But the job got done. Acts 5, 12 through 15. When you have a say amen. amen. When I get it, I'll say amen. 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 And it says there, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's port. That said something already. You want a miracle? Start pulling as one cord. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasing and added to the church multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. That meant anywhere the sun was, they wanted Peter to walk between them and the sun so his shadow would fall on them. And as he walked along the street and his shadow fell on them, they got healed. Somebody say unusual. unusual. Somebody say creative. Yeah. Matthew 14, 34 through 36. And everything I'm telling you about, you have the ability to get. You're in line for a shadow blessing. <laughs> You're in line for an apron blessing. You're in line for a handkerchief blessing. And I'm not talking about something you buy through the mail. Oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 14, 34 through 36. And it said there, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret. Are you there? Yeah. And when the men of that place recognized him, and we're talking about Jesus here, 
They sent out into all the surrounding region. When they knew somebody of God was in town, they didn't go on vacation. They sent out and they found everybody that needed help. Because the word was out, when he show up, help shows up with him. Wow. Then those who were in, and, and when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick and begged him that he might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Now, we think it was only the woman with the issue of blood that touched his garment. But it seemed like his garment ministry was real popular. They brought him and they said, he don't have to touch us. We're going to touch him. Somebody say unusual. unusual. Somebody say creative. creative. How many of you know healing is a healing? As long as you get what you need. You need to stop telling God how he need to heal you. And just let him do it. Just ask him and trust him to plan it. Put your hand over your chest and repeat after me. God has a creative miracle just for me. So today, so today because, I receive it by faith, because I receive it by faith, I have it. I have it. You don't know what you just said, but you've helped your own destiny out. How many of you believe it when you said that? How many of you do need a creative miracle? Come on, hold them up high. Somebody got both hands and one foot up. I need a creative miracle. See, a creative miracle can come against every no that men say. You just need one yes from the Lord. All I need is one word from the Lord. No matter how many times it stacks up that I got to know, I didn't get it, I won't have it, I can't get it. I, the, the, the doctors say, this say, the, the stats say, the tests say, all you need is a yes from the Lord. <laughs> Anybody waiting on your yes from the Lord? How many have it before? You got it now. Even if it's not with you in the natural now, you have it in the Holy Ghost, you have it in the Spirit, I have it right now. I got a yes now. Now to that yes, say amen. amen. Woo, God. The power was not in Paul. Is it possible that God wants to use you as a conduit to get healing and deliverance to his people? A surrendered life is available for use. A life that shows up is available for use. A committed life is available for use. You're not available if you're not committed. A tried and proven life is available for use. Sometime before the Lord can use you, he has to try you. And proof you. Every coin in your pocket was another form of metal. It might have been silver, but it needed to be proved. What does proving mean? It hardens it. Gets it ready for use. And some of you thought you were ready, but you need proof. Oh my God. 
so that you are available to use. A life that ministers Jesus, no matter what the situation, is available for use. I can imagine that some of the people picked up those handkerchiefs by accident. They didn't know they were going to get healed. They just said, this is Paul's. And we have examples in the Old Testament where some of the, 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 the men that hung out with the prophet, they wouldn't even throw his water away. When he said, give me some fresh water, they say, yes, sir. They didn't carry it to the back door and shh. You know what they did? But y'all germaphobe. Ooh, ooh, I know that mess you up. In this COVID reality. I, <laughs> but that's what they did. Whew. Did, did y'all hear me? And got what they needed. Just for a point of contact from a life that is in use for the Lord. My God. But what God did in this situation was amazing. With those aprons and those handkerchiefs. He reached into a superstitious community. And say, I'm going to take your superstition to show how much God I am. So the superstitious ones thought it was magic. Because it looked like everything else they were doing. And God will tolerate your superstition to get you to a place of belief so he can capture your soul forever. How many of us did he have to reach into our stuff to get us. Y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You candle number people. <laughs> Incense burners with blessed numbers on them. No, 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 no. I see. I want a woke congregation. Don't I don't want you to be philosophical about this. Sending special money to special readers. God had to look inside of your superstition. And say, I'm better and I'm mightier than, than that blessed candle. Yeah. Or that incense with a lottery number on the top. Ooh, oh, this got tight. Lord have mercy. I This doesn't mean God is pleased with our superstition, but that in his mercy, he will overlook it to get you to, to get your need met. God goes way out to help you. <laughs> so you can just tell him one time finally, yes, Lord, I receive you. But before then, he had to dismantle a lot of stuff around us. Am I in the right house? 
Anybody had, he had to knock down some stuff in our lives so that we could finally come to him and believe on him and act like he meant what he said he meant, that he determines to save us forever. Oh, God, hallelujah. I don't know what it was, but you got something. Let me go on. Some people that can't interpret spiritual stuff only operates in the natural. And this next reading will show you something. Acts 19, 13 through 16. Told you you don't have to go far, just go down. Everybody got it? Then some of the itinerant. Jewish exorcists, let me stop there, itinerant Jewish exorcists. These were traveling Jewish exorcists, people that got out devils. They were just like traveling evangelists. But they went from place to place getting rid of devils. So they thought. Did anybody get to 19? Yeah. Is that in there? Yeah. All right. Let me read it again. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves. That's, that's the, Lord have mercy. To call the name of Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preached. The devil don't want the authentic. He wants, the, he wants what he thinks is, is the pattern. He wants to know what the plan is. How do you do this? And the best they could deduce is we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. That was that group of exorcists. And then it goes on to say, and there were seven. Everybody says seven. seven. Sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest who did so, mean they also joined the exorcist in trying to exercise based on the Jesus that Paul knew. So, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. <laughs> but who are you? He's still asking that question today. Who are you? I'm in church, but who are you? I'm a Christian, but, but, but who are you? I know Jesus. I know Paul. But who are you? Then it said, let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, Jesus I know, Paul I know, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. The evil spirit told the man, jump Sceva's seven sons and them traveling exorcists. Jump all of them. And he jumped him, this one man was full of the devil. And beat him out their clothes. Running him to the streets naked. Acting like they knew Jesus. Don't get jumped.
Don't get jumped today. Let's go back to Jesus. Why could the devil say he knew Jesus? Oh, I know him. Because one Friday I thought I got him. And he stayed dead. <laughs> Three days. And that third morning, I had to shut the bar down. The dancing stopped. And the party was over. Because what I thought I had got up from the grave. With all power in his hand to the glory of his father. Yeah, I know Jesus. He's that one that walked on the water and gave sight to the blind and healed people with the hem of his garment. I, I, I know Jesus. Let, let, let's talk about Paul. I jailed him and he came out singing. I run him out of one city and he went to another. And one time, we, when he got out of jail, he refused to leave. And he hung out a little while longer. And everywhere he go, there is healings and signs. And one, I know Paul. But who are you? What the scriptures say, I know who's in relationship with me. I know who's assaulting the kingdom of darkness. Did the devil get mad because you woke up this morning? <laughs> you got up out of the bed. He said, he started cussing. Oh, here they come again. They're getting ready to give me a fit again. Did he get towed up because you got up? Are you a threat to the devil today? Or when you get up, he say, oh, that ain't nothing. I got them already. <laughs> Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Are you out there? The devil knows if you have made Jesus Lord of your life. The devil knows who is willing to lift up the name of Jesus. That's why he said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? In the same pattern, there are many churchgoers who will perish because they have no personal relationship. You must have a personal relationship. Are you not a threat to the kingdom of darkness? You're a threat. You got to be a threat. Everything you do is a threat. The worship at the beginning of this service was threatening. It glorified God, but it horrified hell. There was a quaking in hell while you were worshiping. The devil was upset. And I dare say he got mad. But y'all socked it to him today. Some of you couldn't hardly stop. And I said, God, worship him, worship with him, hang with him, hang with him, be that weapon for him if you have to lay him out in the floor. And I'm waiting for a day when, when it'll be so hot till it'll bowl you over just like somebody just knocked you out, just like the Shekinah did in the Old Testament. It'll lay you out and it won't be superficial, it won't be play. You can't get up because you worship him so good. His presence is that thick on you until you don't want to get up. You just want to lay out in him. And when you go down, when you get up, you'll never be the same again. You'll get up free. You'll get up delivered. And you'll get up knowing that my God is able to do anything. That's what church is about. So if you dare just reach in and touch it. The 
presence. Your presence. I dare you to reach in and grab. Because you know what? It, it, it'll get tangible. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. It, 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 hey, hey. It'll get touchable. God will come close enough for you to, you say, I feel it. <laughs> and it won't be like it's a, in my spirit. I, I feel him on my body. <laughs> Because when you create a habitation for him, he brings his concentrated self into you. And it'll feel like somebody pushed you and ain't nobody around. <laughs> it'll be like the woman that touched Jesus and they said, Master, there's a lot of people around you. You'll feel the touch, but you... Lord, Lord, what, what was that? You, then you start feeling for stuff. But you've been on that bed for all them years. When did you know you could jump? Because I felt something. Something touched me. <laughs> when did I know I could jump when I couldn't? walk. I've never had a memory of walking. When did I know I could? God wants to come close enough to you <laughs> to just push you over. Because your presence your presence is heaven to me. Bible goes on to say in the next few verses in that same chapter read it at your leisure that all the people who had expensive exorcist books brought them to one point in the city see after a while everything that's not like God you got to burn it up <laughs> <laughs> after they had come to Jesus they said and they were worth thousands and thousands of dollars the Bible says and they brought them to one central place and they set them all afire What do you need to burn up today? What do you need to burn up today? Because you don't need a spell to be lucky. You don't need something to say, this is what I need to do here. This will get me luck. This will give me an advantage. This will give me a different place. This will do this for me. This will do that for me. This will make me lucky. This will make me this. This will make No, 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 no. Burn it up, burn it up, burn it up, burn it up. Put them hands up and worship the Lord. Your presence. You need relationship today. Keep singing. I'm 
I'm just going to talk. If you heard this message and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, give him your life, burn it up today. Because he loves you. And he's all you need. Blessings to you today. Find a good church. We're at 4660 Military Street in the city of Detroit. Come on by. Your presence is here. Give the Lord a good praise all over this room. Come on, you can do better than that, people of God. around this room look at somebody and prophesy to them something good whatever the Lord births out of your heart you, you tell them Praise the Lord to all of our viewers. We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.